Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today I present Wife. Hello. Greetings. Why are you here today, Wife? I saw a movie. Mm, what was the movie called? One Piece. Just that? No. You saw One Piece the movie? The very first one? Well, there's mm. actually an original One Piece movie that's just One Piece? Absolutely there is. Wow, that's Are we here to talk about that? No. One Piece Stampedo! I don't know if that's the Japanese, I'm making that up. I'm really sorry, Japan. You accompanied me to Melbourne for the Australian premiere of One Piece Stampedo. Stampede, yep. Uh, to a theatre with a crowd of many, many, many people, with a line that stretched all the way around. It went a really long way, and I didn't know if we were going to get in, <laughs> even though we had tickets. So just a little bit about your background before we go into this. What is your relationship with One Piece? Uh, uh, Non-existent is the word I would use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I know other animes. <laughs> That's wonderful. So you're coming into this with a very different perspective than I think we'll see almost anywhere else. I've I've read like the first six five pieces of One Piece, which is kind of like a fifth. I would say you've read about the first four volumes. What five years ago now? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, if you had to describe your experience in one word with One Piece Stampede, what would that word be? Eh. Okay. And now, if you had to expand that one word into a concise paragraph, what would that be? Oh, jeez. Um, I mean, you didn't say there was going to be a quiz. Um, I enjoyed it as much as I enjoy many movies, but I feel like it didn't give me enough of an in to enjoy it as much as... I probably could have. Yeah, and it's it's very much like that. So, a bit of background on Stampede. It was a movie that was made to celebrate 20 years of the One Piece anime. So a stampede of years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll go with Liam. that. But the way I described it in my reviews is it would be like taking someone into Avengers Infinity War or Endgame without them having seen or even having any knowledge of any of the prior Marvel films. Yeah, you don't do that. But the thing is, I've seen a previous One Piece movie. You would think I would understand slightly more. Yeah, so you saw One Piece film Gold, which was a much more standalone story. It was a heist and I love heists. It was a heist film and it was good fun. But that movie, it focused on the Straw Hats. There were a couple of other characters from the series in it, but they only had very brief cameo appearances. Whereas this movie was very much the opposite. It took a whole ton of cameo appearances and made that the movie. You know what? I would say that the entire thing was a cameo. Like everyone got like five seconds, which is why every five seconds I was like, wait, who's that? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. No, 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 no. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. I think I understand. No, I don't understand anymore. I'm confused. And then there's a lot of characters that look like other characters. Yeah. So I was going to bring that up next. There were a lot of characters who you thought were the same character. Yeah. Um, Sanji and Sabo. They stand out. You thought they were essentially the same person right up until the end. Not until the end. I. It was only when I realised that I knew for a fact that Sanji has weird eyebrows. <laughs> and I didn't see the eye... I was like, okay, so the hair's covering the eyebrow, but in this frame, the, there is no... Uh, what's happening? Where's his crazy <laughs> eyebrow? He, the eyebrow's the reason I, I'm not the biggest fan of him. It makes him look creepy. Really? Yeah, it makes me uncomfortable. Oh, I love the eyebrows. No, nobody should have eyebrows like that. He does too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why when Salvo turned up, I was like, oh, good, they got rid of the <laughs> oh, Finally, he's normal. No, that's kind of fair enough because they are both very blonde characters and they both used sort of fire-based techniques. Yeah. And then there was another one, um, Robin and... Uh, Boa some, Hancock, yeah. Yeah, but she's not Boa Hancock. I named her something else. I can't remember what it was. You named her Marissa. Yes, I did. Yeah, Boa Hancock, close enough. But you couldn't tell the difference between her and Robin no. for the entire film. And that's also fair enough because they do have a very similar character model. They both have boobs and dark hair, long dark hair, and then, and uh, then there's no detail in their characters beyond that, really, other than one of them loves Luffy. Yeah, so there's Like, a l- that's literally the difference. One of them loves Luffy and Sanji Sabo loves the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so for the purposes of this film, you are correct. Yes. There is a lot of differences between the two of them. You, I disagree. With the proper background information, which is, you know, 22 years of publication. Liam, if you had told me that there was background reading to do... You wouldn't have done it. I would have done some. Yeah, the first four volumes. Well, no, I've already read those. I'd read the next four. Like, I would at least try. Like, if I'd known that, that would, it was... That would put you some way through the hour long arc. I had absolutely no context. So if I'd had a little bit more context, it might have been better. Yeah, so I was tossing 
tossing up over whether or not to try and give you that kind of context, but from everything I'd saw of it, I'm very glad I didn't because I don't think it would have been possible. Essentially, you're asking me to explain the last 22 years of One Piece, which is what I have a channel dedicated to That's doing. what I was about to say. You have an entire channel. You didn't even ask me and to watch some of that. <laughs> I've made close to 500 videos for it, and I haven't even begun to properly scratch that Liam, surface. Liam, when did we start to decide that we were going to go to Melbourne and, and watch this? A long time ago. But yeah, you know, so I could have started on 500 videos. I could have at least got through all of the explaining of characters. I haven't even done a 101 for all the characters in this movie. There's I have, though. a lot. I've done a lot. You've named a lot of characters yes. that appeared in this film. Yes, I have. In fact, every time that happened, I leaned over and prodded you and said, I know that one. <laughs> you did. You couldn't remember what you'd named them, like no, Marissa, but, but yeah. The important thing is, I've seen them before, and I recognise that I've seen them before. So, as what I'm going to call an outsider, mm. what was it like seeing these collective of crazy people together doing various things? Their five seconds, I mean, I'm sure it was great. There were maybe in fact there was one character that for me for the entire thing I followed I ba I vaguely I say vaguely I followed his thread for the entire film and I feel like the film was more about him than about anyone else. Who was that? Usopp. So what struck you about Usopp? He had a three dimensional character. <laughs> He did, didn't he? And that was a surprise because I didn't expect any of the Straw Hats to be having those kind of moments here because the film was sold as focusing on the not Straw Hats very much. Oh, okay. I didn't even see trailers for this. So, you know, I oh. literally went in with no information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. No, Usopp was, he's essentially the hero of the movie. He is. Yeah. I mean, he As is far as hero. I'm concerned, Usopp is the one who defeated Bullet. Narratively and emotionally um, and practically, he was the hero, which I think is fantastic because what I've read of him in the first four volumes that I have read, he's he's the best. Like I, well, the, interesting assessment of Usopp. You know, early on. you know what's really annoying to me, the based on what what you've said and what I've now what I'm now learning about this is that if Usopp's the only one that is fully fleshed out like this, then I don't know if I want to keep reading. Okay, so that's actually the exact opposite of what I told you. I said that if you kept reading, everyone else would be fleshed out in a similar manner. Okay, but they weren't in the movie. No, and to be honest, and, uh, I was no, shocked that even one of them was. Okay, but I it makes me wonder how deliberate that was. Like, did they mean to flesh out Usopp and if they didn't mean to his characters managed to come through in like his little five second bit enough that I could still connect with it yeah I would say it was definitely a deliberate move and it's because of the j word juxtaposition oh. so the main oh, the, the main <laughs> the main antagonist of the film Douglas Bullitt his he's very flat we'll talk about him in a bit mm. but his whole thing is that he believes that he is the ultimate power on the seas and that's his main goal in life. So, when you've got someone who is this ridiculously, absurdly strong person, mm. I think it was a really nice contrast to essentially have him defeated by quite possibly the weakest person on the island. You mean physically weakest? Yes. Right, okay. Because I feel like he was probably the most tenacious and most emotionally strong of all of them. He, yeah. He recognised his flaw. Like, he know he sees his flaw, mm. he knows his flaw, he then goes, I'm flawed, I'm a big flawed person, I'm the worst person to be dealing with this situation but i'm still gonna do it and that's like that's true bravery like it's great to see luffy doing his thing but like there is no there's no um excusing true bravery or no no alternative no <laughs> there, excuse there is no ex you. <laughs> there is no excuse for bravery there is no excuse for your bravery you will sit down hold that immediately <laughs> <laughs> but that's what i mean no you're 100 percent correct and that is essentially usopp's overall character arc throughout the series he starts out as a coward and to some extent he still remains that way throughout everything but he gradually takes steps towards becoming braver and braver mm. and in this film when you see him standing up to someone who wiped out the entirety of the worst generation that's a big moment for him yeah and and in fact i oh i've forgotten what moment it was but there was a moment where he wasn't crying where he stood up and he was having one of his very, very brave moments. And I cried and I was like, good <laughs> on you, man. Yeah, you can do it. You did it. I'm so proud. I, I don't know much about Usopp. It was just from what I'd seen in the beginning where he, you know, deliberately been like, well, I'll just stay here. I'm fine. And then he just got, he immediately just did a, you know, a good old juxtaposition flip. And 
became this, you know, character that I'm going to step up because nobody else can at the moment and I need to look after my captain and that's important. Yeah, exactly. And I think that if you do eventually read One Piece, you'll find that everyone does have that moment and they do get fleshed out like that. And there's more than a few stories that I think you'll definitely cry. Yeah, I mean, I'm a crier. We talked about this yesterday. You are. Choppers is one of them. Oh, no. no moving Choppers on. Choppers is one of my favourites. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, we're moving on. Moving on. Douglas Bullet. We talked about him briefly after yeah. the movie, but what were your impressions? I think we're very much on the same page here. Why? Why bother? <laughs> like, what? What? I'm... Like, this... One Piece is not Dragon Ball. So why did they take a character from Dragon Ball and put him in One Piece? I think that's a very fair assessment because when you look at the format of Stampede, it could be a Dragon Ball movie. Strong guy appears, all fighters gather to fight him, they all lose, eventually strong guy needs to be defeated. Someone has to defeat... I thought someone completely different was going to turn up. Like that, I was like, okay, so this guy's lost, this guy's lost, this guy's presumed dead, this guy's lost, this guy's lost, this girl's lost. Okay. (laughs) So like once you get rid of characters like that once you defeat characters like that without them going through some kind of a transformation you can't expect them to be able to defeat anyone it really annoyed me that any character at all could come back from that the thing that i liked about usopp going back to him because i'm (laughs) clearly enamored is that very early on he did he did something i don't know if this is spoilers or not (laughs) oh my god it is well we've already spoiled good it's already spoiled um Early on, he shoots. He when he shoots bullet. Yeah, he shoots some pop greens at him, and it looks really, like they have it, no It looks effect. like they do they nothing. Just, like, bounce straight and off. that's what I think works about that solution. Yeah. The problem is that they also decided they were going to bring Luffy back and say, "Well, Luffy can do it." Like it? No, we've, he's proven that he can't do it. That he's was the, proven that there is absolutely no point. In that to defense, it. that was the teamwork moment of it, though, because Usopp's little things only activated on that on heavy a, impact. Yes, but so, then why did he not do that heavy impact to start with? Like, why not start with your biggest move? He didn't. He had to. He had to spend two hours working up to his biggest move. All right, so the thing about that biggest move is that. That has never happened in the series. They are the King, King, King Kong gun. Why? He said it three times because it's important. So there's a a King Kong gun, which is essentially one of Luffy's ultimate attacks that we knew of. Mm. So that gigantic King, King, King Kong gun was unexpected, to say the least. Oh, okay. It was massive. Well, yes, it was. It was a big gun but like because luffy doesn't go through any real learning he doesn't develop at all he is what i called a mary lou he doesn't learn anything he doesn't change in any way shape or form the world moves around him and all of a sudden he's stronger like it it, and it maybe that did happen but i didn't see it as someone on the outside it didn't it, the story wasn't told to a point where I could say that happened. No, that's fair enough. It's not a, despite being the main character, this was not a Luffy-centric story. He was just him for very much of it. And in the end, he had to pull out something that could defeat this staggering power. Yeah. We- and it it wasn't overly believable. I mean, it wasn't believable at all. The well, only reason it worked is because it then was a reaction to... Usopp. That's the only reason it worked for me. Yeah. What was more believable was when they had the eventual team up at the end and they were slowly chipping away at Bullet's gigantic form. Yes. But then as soon as it became one-on-one Luffy versus Bullet, that that I had quite a few problems with just because of how strong they'd already made him. Yeah. And and the whole like... um, This means (sighs) nothing to you, but they they compared his strength to a, a man named Silver's Rayleigh who was the first mate of the Pirate King. I feel like you've said this before. Continue. Because <laughs> I, I, I've and heard of Silver's... You've brain. named him before, I think, actually. Point, and he he's a living legend of the world. Like, if there was a, a tiered power system, he would be right at the top, and, you know, Luffy would be somewhere down here. Mm. So to That's com- two-thirds down, just for anyone else. <laughs> so, you know, to put Bullet on that level and still kind of have him in his physical prime, whereas Rayleigh's an old man, mm. like, there's a lot of ground for Luffy to cover... Yeah. And it, it's not satisfactorily done. I mean, essentially what happens is, you know, Luffy gets a bigger attack to defeat the bigger bad guy. I mean, it, it comes down to more of a slugfest than that, but yeah. still. And I'm, <laughs> I really enjoy, I enjoyed a couple of moments with Luffy where um, he got slammed down and may well have been bleeding out and may well have been dead, almost dead. 
and they pick him up and they start running and then all of a sudden he's alive and using his king 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 gun is the first one and then the second one is where the hell did he get those bandages <laughs> the implication is that chopper would have treated him but it did happen but very when? quickly <laughs> when did they it did happen to- very quickly <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like all of a sudden oh well that is some very snappy medical attention yeah well, chopper's the best all right so what was next on your list of notos um snails were my favorite snails were the best man snails just ring 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 it's a snail so my wife was referring to den den mushies which is snail a, a wonderful experience because the moment someone on screen said just contact me via the snail i was like oh right and i specifically said don't give me context <laughs> I don't want your context. I want to dream. <laughs> because <laughs> and snails. The, the Dendan Mushies were also heavily featured in this film. Like People were communicating with them all the time. And there were visual Dendan Mushies yeah. as well. The um, yeah. video transponder snails. Uh, what I loved about those snails is that you could immediately see who was talking on the other end. Because their face looked like yes. the face of the character they were that's, that's the voice the of. And I loved it. That is the charm of them. Yeah. I want one. They have a whole bunch of them. No, I want you one. You want one that's like you. I, I, can we have a house phone that is attendant mushy? I don't see why not. Yay. But yeah, the general idea is that they're shaped like whoever's speaking through them. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. I think it that is my new favorite device. <laughs> I just think they're fantastic. I, I mean... I was really, as soon as I heard contact me via snail, I was kind of expecting someone to like pick up a snail and put it to their ear and then just like have to deal with the slime coming off of their face. Like when they put it down. No, no, no. They're much more civilized than that. Yeah, I know. But I had, (laughs) that's where my brain went. We use the snail like a phone. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I love snails. They were great. Another thing, there was a lot of pulling out. (laughs) Yes, there was. Would you like to elaborate on what you're referring to? I feel or like are we just going to leave it there? That's, I feel like it explains itself. There was, there was a lot of pulling. They just, like, there was a whole five-minute segment where the entire point of it was, we need to pull out. It's time to pull out. We're pulling out. Pull out. Pull out. Pull out. It's important. We need to pull out. <laughs> that was, and that was the point. So yeah, that was the, the segment where... Um, all of the marines were evacuating the island because they were Buster about call. to bombard themselves. Yes, a Buster call. call. Buster that call. Buster's Buster. Buster, Buster call. call. So that had much more of a, a primary role in the story than I thought it would, just by seeing the trailer. So a Buster call is essentially one of the most dangerous things that could ever happen in the One Piece world because it summons a fleet of ten marine battleships and they come with the purpose to destroy an entire island. Okay, because... It never happened. No, the Buster Gore got called off in the end. And it confused the hell out of me because I spent the entire time thinking, oh, Buster Call, that means that, you know, a load of Marines are going to turn up and there really weren't that many. And it was. There were a lot of Marines in this movie and they were very much tertiary characters because we focused primarily on the pirates. But from the Marines you did see, what did you think? What do you remember, actually? That's probably a better question. What do I remember of the Marines that I did yeah. see? Well, there were two Marines right up front. As soon as we'd said, Nobody can tell the Marines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Marines yeah. were already there. Yeah. Cut to Smoker and Tashigi dressed in pirate outfits. <laughs> Cut to Marines <laughs> who were just enjoying themselves. Oh, they were undercover. Smoker does not enjoy himself. He's no. not a man who derives enjoyment from anything. He smokes screens. He smokes two cigars at once at all times. I saw that. Mm. And I did wonder how. He just has a very Because he habit. also liked to talk and never put his <laughs> hand to his mouth. <laughs> and just, the physics of that. Oh, damn, look. Um, I didn't find the Marines particularly frightening. I should have, based on what you've just told me about Buster Call. Like that yeah. should have been much more. F- I should have. I should have been more afraid. But I guess that's them also having their five seconds of this. We can yeah. assume. I think you would have felt more physically imposed if you understood exactly who was there, rather than the sheer amount of stuff that was there. Mm. Because there were two admirals out of three in this movie that were present and they are extraordinarily powerful people one of them was the swordsman who came out of nowhere to fight zoro and the other one was Mm, yeah the guy who turned into light right at the end of the movie and who was kind of in command of the entire thing yeah every time you know how i knew that i was missing some vital information Hmm. everyone in the audience went (gasps) or just started applauding or went like (laughs) there there was a lot of people enjoyed this movie which is great they did it took them a 
a while to get into it because we had the introduction, then a whole ton of very key people were introduced. But the first time there was a massive, massive cheer was a surprise moment to me, and it was when Bartolomeo came on screen. And he's, he's not who I'd expect to have generated that first, but from that moment on, pretty much every renowned character that appeared got that applause or got that <gasps> moment. Who's Bartolomeo? Bartolomeo is essentially a Luffy fanboy. So you may have seen oh, right, his ship yeah. in the movie. It's mm. called the Going Luffy Senpai. Mm -hmm. I remember his enthusiasm. Yeah, I remember these fanboys. There were a lot of fanships. There was a unicorn one as well. Oh, that was Cavendish, yeah. So they are both members of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Ooh. Wait, hmm. what? They have a fleet? Yeah, like a non-consensual fleet. Luffy doesn't approve of it, but they are... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> when, you when you said non-consensual, I was going to be like, wait, what? And then... I realized it was the other way. <laughs> it's not him abusing power, it's him not wanting power and being ignored. Yeah, exactly. So right. essentially all of these captains came and offered him their services and he was just like, I don't want it. And they were like, we're going to do it anyway. Hooray. But the other straw hats are absolutely fine with using this imp this information. 100%, yeah, absolutely. Right. But yeah, Bartolomeo is so much more popular than I ever thought he was. Maybe I think it's just because he is essentially the fans. All right, let's go through your notes and let's keep going through what you've got. Okay. Panda Man. There were several Panda Man sightings, possibly even Panda Men, plural. Not at the same time. Not at the same time. They were different. They seemed to be different they in were, the art style. They were different incarnations of Panda Man. So Panda Man doesn't always appear as the same like muscular panda dude every time. Right. That's were, his established form. There was a skinny one with a pink shirt. Yes. And there was... Like the one that I've seen in in the books, and there was another one that was just I only saw the head, but I was yeah. like panda. There were an awful lot of panda man sightings in this film. Um, in fact, pretty much any time I'd say there was a giant crowd scene, mm -hmm. there was something to be looking at. You wouldn't know what you were looking for, but there were characters in this movie that have appeared all throughout that ninety one volumes that were just like sprinkled in here and there in very odd places usually group scenes <laughs> you say odd places usually group, group scenes, scenes yes usually like it was a big pirate festival i could well i mean that's the point all the pirates turn up it's the point i do wish we'd had a bit more of the festival i disagree with that i f funnily enough one of my notes says the first 20 minutes or so weren't the most in interesting thing ever because the movie felt slow to start like i just hmm. i mean i what i wanted wasn't even necessarily more story but I wanted to spend more time on those moments like if you're going to enjoy the festival I want to that's, see more of you enjoying the festival that's what I mean more of the festival like in film gold half of the movie was the straw hats arrive on Gran Tesoro yeah. and they have fun in the casino and they yeah. do all sorts of crazy crap but all of the time at the festival was kind of covered in the montage of the opening yes. and then it was like immediately into you know the rush for Roger's treasure that's what yes. I mean. So I think we mean the same I think thing. We, yeah, I agree with that. Even if we're saying it differently. I agree with that. Yeah. And, and I... I Because to me, the movie felt very much like it just threw you into the deep end immediately. Yes. It had a nice... <laughs> well, threw you up into the island end immediately. Yes, on a knock-up stream, which is the thing that happened yes. in the series. So like every, oh. almost everything in this movie is a callback to something that's actually happened. Right, okay. So assuming that everything is a callback, their hope was that everyone that turned up to see this movie has read the entire thing. Yep, read or watched, or at least they have enough of a general knowledge to take enough from it. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't this movie have been more like Serenity? Um. In Serenity, Firefly was like, what, eight, ten episodes? Something like that. Like, they didn't, they didn't get renewed... But all of the fans from that movie, when they uh, from that series, when they saw the movie, they could connect with it. And people that haven't seen the movie could still connect with well, it. I actually saw Serenity before Firefly. Did, and you enjoyed Serenity enough to watch Firefly, I'm assuming. Yes, but Serenity, as big as it was compared to Firefly as a series, it was still a condensed story. It was about that crew of people. Which is the whole Stampede crew. was not about, you know, one crew yeah, of people. I guess. It was about, here is the entire span of One Piece. I will take that, 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 that gonna smush you together and it's gonna be fun so they tried to take 20 years worth of world and put it into one movie 22 and no 22. they didn't they actually left out so so much 
I mean, yeah, they left out so, so much, but like every two minutes there was an applause. So there were times when every minute or so it just seemed like, and you're here and you're here yeah, and you too. There were bits of story though. So two minutes, I'm going to, on average. There were bits of story. Yes. Most of it. It's, it's very action heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it was, look, it's exhausting. Like yeah. that's, that's tiring. It's tiring. After a while, no, you get, I agree. You get There's... tired of watching people punch other people. I enjoyed the, um. Luffy punching a guy and getting and then Bullet getting out of the way and the two guys punching each other. I really enjoyed that moment. Yeah, that, that was, was nice. when Luffy punched Kid, which was good fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like I I feel like the scope of the movie was too large for what they wanted. Like what sorry, what they were trying to do, the length of the movie didn't cover it or what they tried to do was too big and ill-defined, which is a big call to make on 22 years of fiction. I'm really sorry. That's not no, what I meant. I enjoyed the movie. It was but very I ambitious. Like to take it back to the Infinity yes. War comparison, that film is what, three hours long? Yeah. And it has a lot of action in it, but it has its moments of break where it progresses yes. a story and it really takes its time to build up to an eventual ending. Yes. This didn't do that. This was what, un- just under two hours? Yeah. It was short. I was expecting it to be longer than it was. It was quite short. I mean, yeah, animated movies, Japan, yeah. money. Yeah. It was It was a bit of an ask, but I think if you're a One Piece fan, you do not care. If you're whatsoever. a One Piece fan, you're, As you could you're tell getting by the audience want. reaction. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you're a One Piece fan, you're getting what you want. And it's, I mean, it's like when we go to see, you know, Dragon Ball movies that I understand, like suddenly I understand that because I know that culture. I know that I have that history. So, but even then, like when we go to see Dragon Ball movies, I'm like, it's just punch, 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 lots of punch. Look, he's stronger now winning. Like. Except for the Broly movie. But he's, but they've never, the Broly movie, but even then it was just punch, 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 punch. Eventually, but that was like half an hour of solid story before you got to the punch, punch, punch. That's true. You know, I'm a big fan of story. (laughs) I I think think we both are, given that we work in storytelling. Yeah, my job is to tell a story and I I really um, find that to be the most important thing. So even in a movie that is designed to sum up, you know, a whole world and give people an into that world. Not summarise. Definitely not not summarise. It makes no intention to try and explain things to you. It's more, you understand this world. Here's a big what if scenario. Yeah, I f- I feel like the scope of the what if was too big then for someone. No, without that as a movie. Background. I, if you're judging it as a film, I said this in my reviews. It's it has a lot of problems from a pure filmmaking standpoint. Yeah. it's not a satisfying film, but it is to me a satisfying experience. Yeah, I mean, so that makes I sense. sat there happily. I didn't fall asleep and. <laughs> But, th- but that's a big thing for me. I didn't fall asleep. Like I'm, I work in theatre. I flew directly from Perth to Sydney, then to Melbourne <laughs> to see this movie. I was working on like I don't know four or five hours of sleep over forty eight hours, and I stayed awake. Like I, that's I feel <laughs> that's the biggest praise I can give it. Really, <laughs> to be entirely honest with you, is the fact that I'm still conscious. You know what I'm like with movies. I know she's awful. I hate going to movies with you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, I hate going to movies with me too. <laughs> I'm also there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You never get a break from yourself. I don't get a break. All right. So what um, else did you take away from this? The art style. It took me a moment to click in, but I really loved it. It's been so long since I've seen art that looks like it was entirely hand-drawn. I don't know if it was hand-drawn and obviously Bullet, absolutely not. Nothing to do with him was hand-drawn. Nothing to do with his powers, his CGI devil fruit stuff. No. No. But, I mean, the second he powered up, I will it, say, I would say that was not hand-drawn because it, the lines were ah, too yeah. strong. So what you're no referring way. to with powering up would be like his burst of Conqueror's hockey, which, sure. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the series, it does look like he's just going Super Saiyan and then Luffy goes Super Saiyan in response. I mean, yes, we've already talked about it's, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's, it's more complicated than that. And that actually got one of... The biggest cheers of the night, I think, when Luffy fought back with his own Conqueror's Haki. The blue versus red bit. Yeah, it gets depicted in different ways but through depi- for me, different art styles. But That was when I leaned over and said, he's gone super saiyan. Yeah, you, saiyan. Actually, you said that to me and I was like, you know what, that's what it looks like to you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Except it's not, they don't power up when they do that. No, it's, they just give each other deathly stares. Yeah, and they use their energy to push. Yeah, Congress Aki is more like imposing your will on someone else. Yeah. So if I exude my will eh. over you like that, 
Yes. And if you're not strong enough, you will crumble, which is why so many people just fainted in that moment. I understand. It's sort of like how I'm the pack leader. And when I see Basil, the dog, he goes and sits on his bed because I've imposed my will and that tells him that he has to go and submit. Yes, actually, why not? That's not bad. That's not a bad analogy. I am good <laughs> at analogies. Speaking of the, um, well, we weren't actually speaking of this at all, but the other villain in the movie, uh, Buena Festa, if you even remember him. The 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 um bon the good festival man, the festival the, the reason why the the marines turned up at all. The reason why anything happened in the film. The reason why anything all. happened. I I don't understand. <laughs> this is this is the point where I didn't understand why. I don't I don't know why he bothered to do it. I don't know why he was doing it at all. Yes, yeah, so I get his motivation. It's it's a bit of a stretch, but basically his whole thing was that he organized parties and that he was known as the biggest event organizer festival organizer yeah but then he was overshadowed by roger whose death started the great age of piracy which he saw as the greatest event to have ever happened in the world so he wanted to top that i understand it as a motivation i think it's quite unique actually i still don't like him i i think the movie could have done with either fleshing him out more or just less of him the fact that i didn't understand his motivation at all <laughs> tells me everything I, I i he was i don't know what to say about him like he just seemed eh like i i, mm. I didn't he didn't have a story to me he just kept turning up and being like i'm evil for no real reason <laughs> yeah oh i'm gonna do this thing and i'm gonna do this thing and he was just trying to he spent most of the film either sitting in his evil headquarters or standing overlooking the battle that yes. was happening, yeah. And in fact, I think what could have been shown even more, or what would have shown that shown his dislike of being overshadowed even more, would have been um, what was Greenhead Girl's name? Are uh, you referring to Anne? Yes, the, Anne. The girl who makes the, the image, illusions. Image Im- illusion girl. She, if like if every time she took his microphone from him, he'd had more than a comical response. I think I probably would have understood that motivation more. Ah, uh, interesting. So you're confusing Buena Festa with Uh-oh. the announcer, I think. Oh. Yeah, Buena Festa was the Afro guy who organized the festival. You're thinking of, oh. I think his name was Donald Moderate. Who yes. Was just introducing all the people in the yes. initial but he festival was also, section. Well, okay, no. That's another two characters that look the same to me in my head. You know what? There were a lot of characters. I'll give you that. Probably they're going the same to blend palette. into each other. No. <laughs> no, not no. at all. I got confused, but that's okay. So speaking of Anne, actually, we discussed her briefly afterwards as well. Mm. And you, I think, lent over to me as soon as they explained her devil fruit powers, the Biji Biji no Mi. Mm. And you said... Well, that's going to be important. That's a plot point. And I agreed completely, and it wasn't really. No, it wasn't. What it did, and it took me a while to actually figure this out. And we had to talk about it for a while. We did actually talk about it for a while. I know. The answer I gave to you is not the right one. Oh, shit, son. (laughs) At the end, you know when the two, like, walls of flames come out to separate Mm. all the pirate ships from the marine ships? So they were sent out by Sabo, who you thought was Sanji. Not by that point, but okay. (laughs) And when that blast happened, did you notice that there were two figures standing there? And then one of them eventually disappeared? No. I don't remember seeing that at all. It was a brief moment, but essentially when those walls of flames happened, you saw Sabo and you saw Ace standing there. And so Ace Ace is one of Luffy's brothers who is dead currently. Okay. And Ace then... Ace, sorry. And Sabo then ate Ace's previous devil fruit. You Which can, is why he has fire powers. You can eat someone else. Do they poop it out when they die or something? What happens? What? What? Yeah, well, hang on. Of. This is a piece of context <laughs> I don't have. Yeah. Without going into explaining too much of One Piece, once a devil fruit user dies, their fruit gets reincarnated into the world. Right. Okay. That's probably a cleaner way of doing it than thinking they poop out seeds and those seeds grow and then the fruit comes back. Probably. You know what? Take it up with Oda. Maybe that's another possibility. But Oda, I'm helping. But to bring this back around. Yes. Yes. Sorry. That was Anne's entire purpose. She generated that illusion of Ace so at did. Sabo's request because Sabo went up to her and he was like, can you make this man appear? But you didn't see who it was. But why would 
Why would they do that? To give the obvious answer, the reason why they did it is because they wanted to put Ace in the movie. Yeah. But he's dead. Thanks. That's all I needed. If you wanted to construe it into a narrative reason, it's because Sabo wanted to maybe send a message to Luffy. Hey, dude, our bro's here. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it's... Okay, cool. (laughs) They fit another character in with five seconds. They did. Yeah. And it once again, it also got one of the biggest cheers of the night because a lot of people are race fans. Oh, oh, we haven't talked about, we haven't talked about, oh, what's his name? But I know him because he's in the first four volumes. Buggy? He's, yes. <laughs> yes. It was great seeing him animated. He was great. Sorry. <laughs> if there are two characters other than the snails in the entire thing <laughs> that I really loved, it was Usopp and Buggy. Buggy was fantastic. Buggy had a fully fleshed character. I understood all of his motivations. I understood everything. I understood how much he hated being called, like, lesser. <laughs> I understood everything about him and I loved him. Buggy is, he's a fan favorite. He's actually Oda's favorite character. Buggy I'm the Clown, not surprised. Which is why he keeps popping up in the series over and over again. He's just brilliant. He's one of those people who fails upwards. Yes. So he keeps finding himself in positions of more and more power. Yeah, he looks like the, the type. Yeah. It's like, he failed again. Promote think, him. <laughs> promote that man. Promote that man. I think he was very necessary because, like I said before, this film is very action heavy. Mm-hmm. One Piece as a product is not that focused on action. It has a strong balance between that drama and comedy. Mm. And Buggy was, apart from a few moments with Brooke, I think, one of the only real sources of decent comedy Yes. throughout the film. Yep. I feel like Brooke didn't get enough. I mean, he farted that one time. And that was in the first 10 minutes. And it I was, was really yeah. <laughs> happy that it happened, but it didn't happen again. <laughs> I that's wanted true. more farting and I wanted him to talk more from his farts. I know that that's contextually not actually what was happening, but it seemed very much like he farted and then all of a sudden he left his own body and was farting around, looking at things. And I wish I had a power that allowed me to fart and then peer around corners with it. I mean, I can see where you've constructed this thought from. It was only the second time that it happened that I didn't that I realized it had nothing to do with the fart and the yeah. fart was just there. So essentially Brooke has the power to have his soul leave his body so that he can look around for a bit. He's a skeleton, that makes sense. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's what you thought was a fart cloud. Yes. And I was genuinely slightly concerned when it came back in through his mouth. <laughs> But I was willing to accept it because One Piece is weird. Yeah. So it's an interesting point, though. Most of the Straw Hats didn't get a lot of focus just because you couldn't do it. Yeah. I think the primary three, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, they all got their their big action-y moments. Mm. Usopp got his nice moment. Other than that, everyone else was pretty neglected. Yeah. Um, Frankie in particular, I think, as well. (laughs) The character that you forgot existed when you were looking at the badges. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he got them up to the top of the island. He did, and he had... The, I don't know how he did it, In but general, he did it. Frankie came out very briefly as well, but... He turned them into a penguin. Yeah, he turned the Thousand Sunny into an Emperor Penguin model, so it could fly. Despite the fact that Emperor Penguins Yeah, I was about fly. to say, penguins don't fly. Cool. <laughs> One piece is weird. <laughs> is that your, your conclusion? <laughs> that, I, well, no, it's my... That's my, like, you know, in the same way as you just go, this is D&D. One piece is weird. Like it's the same I get it. <laughs> I get that it's just this is this is a thing now. Like in this world, Emperor Penguins probably fly. Some penguins can. Or, more importantly, Frankie perceives that they can, therefore they can. Yeah, I think a lot of it's to do more with Frankie's imagination. Which, you know, tells me a lot about his character, his imaginative guy. He's, I like that. He's very fun. I think you'll very much enjoy him when you get to experience him a bit more. Maybe I should take one or two of these volumes with me on tour. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. I'll finish it so quickly though and then I'll need the next one they won't have it you just post me one every week and I'll post from there posting you anything just take a bunch of them Mm. oh yeah but to conclude Buggy great love Buggy very essential for the movie a good highlight especially I don't know if you picked this up but in like the final clash where the whole group of them are assaulting Bullet he accidentally gets caught up in it yes because of A devil fruit ability that you don't understand. It takes all of them. He just happens to be there and he's like, the fuck is happening? Yes. I saw him look very afraid and confused. (laughs) And I was like, I don't know how you got here, but you're here now. That's Buggy. That's his character. And I appreciated that. I appreciated it because he was one of the few characters that did actually get a repeat. If I were to summarize the entire movie and cast it from just the important characters... (laughs) I would say you need Luffy 
to punch Bullet. You need Bullet because Bullet. <laughs> you need Bullet to be punched by you Luffy. You need bu- Bullet to be punched by Luffy. You need Usopp because he is the story. It's a very pared back film at the moment. You need Buena Festa, but you only need him in so far as he had the idea you could trade him out for the other guy that I got confused with. The Donald Mo- Moderate. Donald, Donald Moderate. You could Theoretically, you could combine those two, make them one character. He could have done that. Theoretically, I don't see why you couldn't make him Bullet as well. Have it be yes. his idea. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know why Bullet existed there at all. Like, it could have been... like. Because everyone, from what I understand, all of the the larger characters were worked with the king. The king? Question mark. The pirate the, the king. Pirate king. Yes. That's uh, why they're. This that's is why something the big that ones. I really wish would have been expanded on because the idea that Bullet was part of Roger's crew is actually incredibly massive. But. It sounded like someone also said, oh, but Buggy was part of that crew too. Yes, he Buggy was. was part of Roger's crew. He was. Which means they knew each other, but there was no no image of, no reflect... Uh, Buggy recognised him at first. He was like, ah, oh, shit, he's here. Yeah, but didn't care. Oh, he cared because he was shitting himself because he yeah, knew but how powerful Buggy he was. Buggy seems to shit himself at everything. Yes, yes, he does. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, but- um... Yeah. What I really wanted to know is, is Bullet seems very out of place for someone on the Pirate King's crew from the very little that we know of those people. So does Buggy, I guess. But I I just don't believe that he was part of that crew. Bullet, that is. But Bullet had a series of flashbacks. Very short flashbacks. Um, which suggests that he was a different person before some critical event. So maybe he would have fit into the crew better if he'd been from what i gathered in the flashbacks after having only seen this once Mm. he crafted a massacre on his island because of some sort of injustice yeah he then went on a rampage where he was stopped by roger the Mm. first person he met who was stronger than him yes and from that bullet got excited about that challenge and then joined the crew that way somehow yeah and when roger died he lost that and went back to his former self which makes sense so when Buggy knew him, he probably wasn't the same as what he is now or what he was before, which means, you know, yes, Buggy could freak out, but it would make sense why he wouldn't freak out as much. Yeah, it's hard to tell because obviously none of this is canon. So oh, it's oh. very, despite the really huge implications that it does have, like the log pose to Rough Tell and everything, which was mm-hmm. romanized as Laugh Tale, that's very interesting oh, yeah. for us because... It's always been spelt in the manga as rough tell. Yeah. Actually, we haven't spoken about that at all. The The treasure. The 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 driving force of the film. Oh my God, I got so angry (laughs) during that whole freaking thing. You know why I got angry, Liam? Because I know Luffy is stretchy. He could have shot himself to the top of it and we would not have had to deal with any of this crap. (laughs) Why did he wait? He's just like, I'm going to run. Oh, I'm just going to keep running. Because he was having fun. He's on an adventure. No, but then as soon as someone else gets it, he's like, oh, wait, no, this is serious. (laughs) It just, it annoyed me. That's Luffy. Stop. He annoys lots of people. And he also wasn't wearing his hat for the majority of the movie. Yeah, he was. He was just wearing another hat over it for the beginning part. Oh, I don't like that. (laughs) <laughs> like, it's one of the only things I know about the character. I want to see the damn hat. His whole story in the first four volumes is predicated <laughs> on that hat. <laughs> yes, you need to read beyond that. Shush. But the idea of the treasure, just while we're on that, mm. I did really enjoy the moment, and I knew it was going to happen, where Luffy just smashed the eternal pose and went, no, I don't want this, thus ruining everything for everyone else as well. Yeah. Because Way it, to be killed at good, dude. <laughs> it's such a Luffy thing to do, because in the end, he's not so much after the one piece as he is after the adventure to get it Mm. so like there has been an opportunity in the series for him to learn what the one piece was and he just outright refused Mm. because it would ruin it (laughs) he's a freaking teenage kid like he's that annoying gamer who's like you know what i don't want to win i just want to make sure you don't win no 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 it's not about that it's so that he wants the adventure. Okay. Well, and he doesn't want anything to potentially ruin the adventure. So he's deliberately extending the game like that time we played Unicorn, Unstable Unicorns. And everyone became chaotic. Oh, it's not like that at all. It's, it is like that. He, he's in the right frame of mind because... He's trying to... The very end of the movie where you see Roger going, what the hell you made in Eternal mm. Pose? Mm. It's like, 
Yeah, it's drawing parallels to that and how, you know, you can't just cheat to become the Pirate King. You need to find it yourself. Yeah, you have to, to you have to be <laughs> the most moral pirate. Mm, maybe, Pro- possibly. He's yeah. trying to he's trying to show his own brand of morals. Like there is a way to become the Pirate King, there is another way not to become the Pirate King. Having the one piece doesn't make you a Pirate King. Getting there it makes you the Pirate He's after the journey. He's after the journey. It's all about the journey, not about, you know, rushing to get there. All right, so final thoughts. For all of the pulling apart that I've done, my thoughts are that someone that knows the, the story will enjoy it because if nothing else, you see all of these characters that you only normally would see in a book animated and that, that's, a huge, that's a huge thing for people. As long as they don't, you know, suddenly have the, like, Hermione issue. There's also no circumstance in the series where you would ever see them all together. Yeah, yeah. At most, you'd see a handful of them at a time. Yeah. Because, you know, the world keeps spinning. Everyone else is doing their own thing. Yeah. And and while... But that makes it problematic for me as well. Because if that's what you're doing, then, like, you want to see everyone else's reaction to everyone else. It's like, you know, the awkward dinner party. <laughs> like, I, I just... I know that this just adds to cost of a movie, uh, cost of filmmaking. And and like, there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't bother because you don't need to, because obviously the fans love it anyway, no matter what comes out, they just soak it all up just to see reactions between people. There was no time for reactions between people, which was really interesting. There are a lot of people, I would say in the worst generation in particular, who have particular vendettas against each other that just did not come across because there was no time for it yeah and that's that's something like that everyone I has wish. a very specific relationship with any of these other given characters and it was yeah they just kind of got mushed together they weren't there there was no there was no uh, there was no specificity to the movie i know that there was probably a heap of story specific things that happened but they were so loosely connected that even with you giving me all this context i just find more holes <laughs> You know what it is? What it seems to me is it's kind of like a glorified fan fiction. Yes. Someone has sat down, they've gone, I want all of these characters in my story and I'm going to make it happen. Yes, that's exactly what it feels like. Which was a lot of fun. It was very well done fan fiction. Yes. Very beautifully animated. I mean, it was technically official fan (laughs) fiction. A fiction. A fiction of One Piece. And the story was there like it, there was a story i came out feeling like i'd learned something it's not a representation of one piece is what no. i would say no it's it's really weird i don't think i've any i've seen anything quite like it before in one piece but that is also what makes it an experience for me anyway because yeah. i've never seen anything like that before so it was a hell of a lot of fun and if you're a fan you will have fun i guarantee it and if you're not a fan um to the people that may or may not have actually you know, being taken along by their partners or, you know, in exchange for delicious goods. Um, I don't remember promising that. Delicious goods. You will enjoy it, and you, but you'll enjoy it because the atmosphere around you, the, cult, the actual culture of One Piece is phenomenal. Like, it was... Normally, I feel quite uncomfortable sitting in crowds of people that are passionate about things because... It, Me too. The, the energy can quickly turn negative and in a group in a large group of people and if that energy turns negative then you have a big problem on your hands and the only time it did that was when the cursor appeared on screen yes i am <laughs> like you it, that's why that was such an important moment because i was like yeah. oh okay you guys gotta fix this now <laughs> this is gonna be fixed now because there's gonna be a problem mm-hmm. like it's just it's a tiny cursor <laughs> the, the the important thing out of that is the energy on the whole for one piece is so mild like normally a lot of people together high energy usually like oh, this sounds stupid but like it can the, the energy can seem like really sharp and disjointed and like even though it's positive like we want this now this is great this has to be great the whole way through whereas for this it was like we are generally on a positive ride and we're generally enjoying it it was like going through it's a small world instead of like going on a huge roller coaster of energy in the room yeah and once again i'll bring that back to the luffy theory it's about enjoying the adventure yeah and, and everyone most people that. who are a one piece fan are very much on board with that yeah well they have to be or they wouldn't stay and i yeah. i appreciated that and so you know what i'm gonna say thank you audience you made 
this comfortable and enjoyable for someone that doesn't normally know or particularly normally enjoy <laughs> One Piece. <laughs> like, I, not that I dislike it. I just haven't found my enjoyment of it. So thank you for that because that is the culture that you guys all bring together and that's a big thing. That's my final thought. <laughs> the thought is over. <laughs> that is the end that of the thought. That is the end of the thought. <laughs> well, very good. I think that was a pretty decent summation and a nice compliment to everyone watching at the moment. Yeah. Very nicely and strategically done, wife. Thanks. I like to conclude <laughs> cleanly. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but applied applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own thoughts on One Piece Stampede. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time, not him. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today, my wife. I'm not One Piece. I mean, I'm one fine piece, but I'm not like one. I, oh, do we have to stop now? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review. <laughs>